we've been talking about probability, the general definition that we have here at the top of the page, as the number of favorable outcomes, or sometimes the amount of unfavorable, if I'm trying to see not, over the total number. Well, then there's odds. Now, odds, you may say things if you're seeing things that talk about, you know, a lot of times you see it with betting more often than anything else. So, odds, however, this is where it's strange. Notice the numerator is the same on both of these. Mm-hmm. Is that we've got the number of favorable outcomes is still the same, but it's not the total number of outcomes down here anymore. It's just the number that are not what we want. So for instance, if I'm doing odds of rolling a six, I'd still have one chance of getting that six, but instead of one over six, it would be one over five because it's the number of things that don't happen the way that I want. And most of the time, it's just written two numbers side by side like a ratio instead of being in a fraction. So here's where this kind of gets weird. Probability stuff just like we've been doing. So for instance, a two, okay, probability is favorable over total, one out of six. Okay? And we went into a great detail with this yesterday, so we won't do a ton of these. A number that's two or greater, two, three, four, five, or six, means there's five out of six. Six possibilities when I roll a die, five of them are what I want. But here's where it changes. If you're asked to find the odds when I roll a die, how many multiples of two would there be? And six. Okay, two, four, and six. Now, if we were doing probability, it'd be three out of six or one half, but yeah. we're not. Odds, right. Three successes, three non successes. And we still are going to reduce these the same way. It's even odds. Okay, it's 50 50. So, for instance, if these were odds where we were talking about gambling type things earlier, it basically this would be you bet a dollar, you win a dollar. Sure. It'd be how it goes, because half the time you're going to win, half the time you're going to lose. So, right, so here, a number greater than two, I'd have four successes, three, four, five, and six, but I'd have two failures or two unfavorable outcomes. So my chances of this occurring would be two to one. And that's how these work. Um, let's bounce to a different one, make this a little more interesting. All right, let's come down Let's hit up this whole group down here with cards. So we got a deck of 52 cards. Probability of selecting a spade. Some of you are like, I don't know. I don't play cards ever. A mm, little more. 13. Yep. Because there's four different suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. So it would be 13 out of 52, or one in four, because so, there's the same number of each. So Correct. It's assumed that you're not having jokers in these decks unless they tell you specifically. So what's the probability of selecting a red jack? Two of them, because there's a diamond and there's also a heart. So two out of 52, or one out of 26. But again, it's all about this word in the middle. The word's probability, success is over total. If it's odds, what are the odds of selecting a heart? It would work typically the same way it does here. The 13 is still true. But right, 13 are good. How many left in the deck are bad in this case? 39. And again, you can write it fractionally, but most of the time when you see odds, it's written this way which basically means for every one success, you're going to have three failures. So 12. Odds of selecting a black six, how many would there be? Okay, so again, 
it'd be like this one where it was 2 over 52, except now there's 2 that are good and 50 that are bad because they'd add up to the total number of cards in the deck, which again, it'd be 1 25th. Or again, you'll have one success for every 25 failures. So that's how that would work. So wait a minute, let's move up a little bit here. Let's start throwing some twists in. Let's start looking for some keywords because everything we've done so far has been a single event. Let's go to 15. What are the odds of selecting a black card or an eight? Okay, start with the odds of a black card. How many black cards are there in a deck? 26. 26. How many non-black cards are in the deck? Also 26, because the other ones are red. Don't reduce quite yet. Okay, what about the odds of selecting an eight? Good, okay. There's four of them, but out of 48 bad ones. Now again, the difference here is with multiple events in that word or in the middle, this is where we take sort of like we did in number eight that we did, the one example that we did from the homework at the very start. But now, right, I have to look and see are there any combos? Are there any black eights? Yeah, there's two of them. How many cards are left then? 50. So notice every one of my fractions here, the numerator and denominator are adding up to the total of 52, the number of cards in the deck. So when you're doing odds, that'll always occur. So then you look at this and you say, okay, ugh, I don't want to deal with that. Yuck. Okay, you don't have to. It's okay in this case if you say, oops, let me get out of here. Now, the 26 over 26, well, that's easy. That's one. But otherwise, if you didn't want to deal with having to find a common denominator and all that other business, you can go to a calculator. But again, make sure your fractions that you're doing, you're putting into parentheses. And yes, as you can see, you actually can get values at times that are greater than the one. So the, odds are in your favor. the odds are slightly in your favor, yes. Anytime you get a value that's greater at the start than the end, it's that much better over your 50% that you're gonna be successful. So let's see here. <laughs> What else? What else? Let me get the calculator out of the way here. Probability we've been doing enough of. I'm not going to worry about that a lot. Okay, let's come down to odds on the bottom here. So we're going to get to those two. Let's, let's kind of work our way up. Okay, odds of drawing a blue marble. Now, it would be kind of be important for me to note this up here. How many total marbles are we working with? One more time. 22. Okay, so there's 22 total that I'm working with. And whether I'm doing probability or odds, that's important to know. So if I'm doing odds of drawing a blue marble, successes? Eight. Just kidding. Seven. seven, which leaves me how many failures? 15. And I can't reduce that anymore because 7 over 15 doesn't reduce. So that's my odds. What about a white one? Okay, uh, two, right, two with 20 failures, but that reduces. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it. Yeah, not good, not good. So then 22, now again, we start getting into compound situations. Okay, so what's my odds of drawing a green? Thirteen. 
Green is five out of 17. And you're like, well, now why are you going back to a fraction? I'm going back to the fractions because if I've got to add things or subtract, that's going to be the way we're going to be looking at it more until the end. Or what about a red marble? 8 and 14, because again, these two values have to add up to the total when we're doing odds. Well, can I get a green red marble? No. So there's nothing to subtract in this case. So again, you can either go find a common denominator, or I can't imagine, oops, and then I almost did a goofy, many calculators where you're not going to be able to find Well, it depends on what your offer is. Like, for instance, there's ways that you even on the white marble at 1 to 10 would take a bet. If somebody would come up, I'd offer somebody, okay, if it draws a white marble, I'll give you 5 bucks. If it's anything else, you give me 1. Well, yeah, I'm going to lose you know, 1 out of every 11 times, but I'm going to be winning all the others. That's how they figure out the betting portion of things. So if you can figure out what your odds are of winning, you can kind of try to tweak it your direction. Like this one, for instance, is a, my chances are a little less than 50-50. So I'd have to be getting better than a one-to-one -to, -one to be willing to make that bet, at least if I'm smart. Let's go. So now, be careful, 23, ooh, we get a double twist. Not drawing a blue. How many of them are not blue? Okay, 15. And how many then are? Seven. So that, that's kind of weird, okay? So yeah, it, it's very much, it's, that's in your favor. A little over two to one. So that wouldn't be too bad. I think, all right. Now we're gonna get into the funky stuff. <coughs> Okay, stick with me. If the probability that an event will occur is three out of seven, what are the odds that the event will occur? Nice, okay? Because again, remember, when you're talking about probability, my successes are what my value is in the numerator. The total number of outcomes is what's in the denominator. So if I am to take my probability, if you take the total minus the success, what you're going to be left with is the number of unfavorable or failure outcomes. Well, how, why is that important to us? Because when we have odds, we need to know that. So here, my unfavorable would be 7 minus 3. So in this case, that's going to equal 4. So when I'm asked what are the odds the event will occur, I already know my success is three, but I needed to know my failures, and I just got that from the difference of these two. So the odds that would occur would be three to four. Ooh. So there's all these little twists that kind of get thrown in. Okay. If the probability that an event will occur is three out of five, what are the odds that it will not occur? Okay, a couple of ways you could look at this. You could look at it and you're like, okay, so if the probability it will occur is three out of five, the probability that it does not occur is three out of five, and that would go along with this. So you'd say, okay, so in this case, my success would be at not occurring, that's three. If there's five total outcomes and three are what my successes are, how many failures are there? Two. So I have to read doubly into that one. Not only do I have to figure out it not occurring, then I gotta go ahead and turn it into odds. It's like, ooh, this is getting more and more interesting all the time. What if we reverse it? 
if the odds that an event will occur are 7 to 4, what's the probability that the event will occur? Okay. Nice. Okay. Because again, my successes are still going to be the same. But if that 4 represents my failures, I would hope you would agree that my successes plus my failures would equal the total number of occurrences. So my total number of occurrences in this case would be 11. So the probability of the event occurring would be my success is 7 out of the total number of occurrences, 11. So I can go both directions with this. All right, one last one. 27. If the odds that an event does not occur are 5, and five to 7, what's the probability that the event does occur? You guys are good. Because again, does not occur. So 5, 7 here tells me there's going to be a total of 12. So the event of it not occurring Yeah, the probability of it not occurring would be 5 out of 12, but that's not what they're asking. They're asking the probability that it does. Well, 5 out of 12, it doesn't. Then 7 out of 12, it does. Fun, 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 fun. So that's what you're up against with odds. You're like... Which one? 39. 39 is not going to directly apply to us. 39 is on this sheet because the class it was used for before, they had just gotten done with doing mixture problems right before. Which one? Okay. Now, 31 is a little different. This isn't something you would have to know off the top of your head, but if you like it for kind of knowledge's sake, it's okay. Possible ranges of values. For probability, we'd said before it's between 0 and 1. Basically, it's from 0 to 100%. Now, odds you've noticed, you can go all the way down towards a 0 event odd of something happening. So you can still have that same starting point. But you've also started to notice these values can get above 1. Sometimes a lot above 1. So technically, there's an infinite number that odds could go up to. So like, for instance, if you've ever seen someone who said, you know, gone up to somebody and said, hey, you want to go out? And they're going, not in a million years. And they go, ooh, there's a chance. Okay? That's the same thing that's going on here. Their odds would be like, Failures would be 999,999, but there's that one success possibility out there. So you'd have like, you know, 999,999 one if you said the probability of it not, the odds of it not occurring. So it, it, it can get to be a pretty big number sometimes. Okay, that's an interesting way to end this. So your assignment with this is the other, the other sheet. Okay.